no one dislikes YouTube more than someone who works on YouTube. If they aren't burying your videos or making it hard to monetize, they are removing useful features while pushing for stuff no one asked for, also known as shorts. While there has been some competition, there hasn't been a site that allows for long-form video content like YouTube. However, there was one competitor, a video site from the land of the rising sun known as Nico Nico Dolga. And don't get me wrong, it's still around, but when was the last time you heard anybody use Nico Nico? I've lived in Japan for seven years at the time of making this video, and I know no one who uses the site. So how did Nico Nico fumble the bag? In this video, we'll take a look at it. Before we start the video, it'd be killer if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos. People have been letting me know that they haven't been getting notified whenever I upload a new video, so uh, yeah, thank you YouTube. Anyway, let's get started. Nico Nico Doga was originally a site that mirrored YouTube videos way back in 2006. However, this strained the site, so Nico made their own video player in 2007 with a mobile app not too long after. After that, it was off to the races. Nico had some unique features from YouTube that made it stand out, particularly the text that flies across the screen. People would have fun with this, using it to mimic bullet hells or posting W's to represent laughter. My favorite is when there's so much text flying across the screen that you can't see the video. The site also had live streams well before YouTube or Twitch would venture into that field. And I don't think many people know this, but Nico Nico also hosts comics, images, and games. And when I clicked on the game tab, I immediately got a hentai game on the front page. That's wonderful. It took time, but eventually Nico found its niche in Japan. It was popular for tournament matches. I remember using the site to search for Street Fighter 4 and Guilty Gear videos way back in high school. But you didn't go there just for fighting games, you went there for all the weird and wacky music and memes that were coming from the site. In particular, the Odotte Mite and the Utatte Mite covers. In hindsight, it seems like the Mita series foreshadowed the trends that would take over TikTok. Though TikTok is way hornier than Nico Nico, which is really saying something. I wouldn't be surprised if there were professional singers and dancers out there right now that got their start doing covers on Nico Nico. I like the song covers because there were plenty of awesome Japanese songs that couldn't be found on YouTube or iTunes at the time because Japanese record labels were ran by dinosaurs that haven't had an erection in over 30 years. Vocaloids also had a huge fan base on Nico Nico, with people making some very imaginative and catchy songs with the software. And there are fans on the site making some very decent music videos for Vocaloid music. In fact, that's how the Black Rock Shooter series got started. And I blame Nico Nico for introducing the white boys to Zune's creation, Toho. I think I've seen more fan animations and songs of Toho than I have seen people actually playing Toho. Look, if you want to know who's going to be the most annoying, the dumbest, the horniest, and potentially racist person on your timelines, just look for a freaking Toho avatar. I think Toho fans are number 5 on the online degeneracy tier list. Like, number 1 has to be the Ostalfo fans, well, Fate fans in general. Number 2 would be those Pokemon fans. Number 3 would be those Sonic fans. And number 4 would be the Hololive stands. That's the, uh, the tier list of online degeneracy. Now let's take a trip down memory lane to the mid to late 2000s where I had bad acne and couldn't talk to a woman to save my life. Basically, every anime meme from the mid 2000s originated from Nico Nico. Just about any anime or game series got their own version of Caramel Dancing. Can't forget Dun Cho Dun Dun Cho Dun Jo. Let's go to Convenience Store. Whatever the hell this video is. The point is, there was a lot of creativity going on in Nico Nico. Thanks to the site offering a good amount of anonymity compared to YouTube, users in Japan could create stuff with a lesser risk of getting doxxed. You're probably thinking to yourself, wow, the site seems amazing, but uh, what's the catch? And it turns out, there's many of them. I've gassed up Nico Nico for most of the vid, but the site had some serious issues. For example, you had to make an account to even view the site. People who couldn't read Japanese just used a redirect from the Madman's Cafe, and eventually Nico rolled back the account requirement in general. At peak times, certain users couldn't even watch videos. And I remember page streams being as annoying as possible to access for those outside of Japan. I remember the Street Fighter tournament, Topanga League, not that one, doing their tournament stream via Nico Nico, and even the most fluent of Japanese speakers outside the country could not navigate Nico's esoteric website design. Those were huge issues, but could be worked around by signing up for premium membership. That's how Nico Nico made its paper. Don't get me wrong, the site is usable for free, but it would be less annoying to use if you paid. Now, there's nothing wrong with a paid membership. Many sites have them. I use Discord Nitro to spam emotes. Yeah, 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 we'll laugh it up. I willingly spend money on Discord Nitro. I'm not much better than the other degenerates I make fun of in this video. 
paid memberships need to feel like luxuries and bonuses to the site, not necessities. YouTube Premium gets rid of ads, lets you download videos, gives access to YouTube Music, all kinds of stuff. But YouTube is very much usable for free users. Nico's Premium service feels like it was patching up a basic functionality of a site. Plus, you need Premium to uncap your uploads. That could be a death sentence for aspiring content creators. My parents, er, I don't pay for Netflix and Disney Plus just for me to make the shows. Though I think it would have made for a good Spike Spiegel in the live-action Cowboy Bebop show. The show would not have been good regardless, but uh, I could have been immortalized as Spike Spiegel. So you're probably wondering, did Nico Nico ever try to expand outside Japan? And they did, and here's how they messed it up. It was clear there were plans to expand, but they fumbled the bag like me whenever I talked to a girl at the bar. The English site appeared with no fanfare and without much content on it for non-Japanese speakers. Shame, as when the English site dropped in 2012, that was right before the infamous adpocalypse of 2013. Had Nico played their cards right, they could have easily quartered over many of the YouTubers who were getting hosed down and be like, hey, you guys want to make money off your vids without getting hosed by copyright? Additionally, non-Japanese and non-English translation of the site were really slapdashed. Version 1 of the Chinese site still had Japanese text, making it confusing to navigate, and reportedly the Spanish version of the site was written by Google Translate. Ultimately, Nico scrapped non-Japanese sites altogether. And for you PS Vita fans out there, there is an app for Nico Nico on the PS Vita. The Japanese version was well supported, but the English version, not so much just like the Vita itself. There's a Nico Nico app on the Switch too, uh, just throwing it out there. So why did Nico Nico Dolga fail to take off outside Japan? Well, it comes down to two simple reasons. I think the biggest flaw of Nico Nico was constantly trying to push for premium at the expense of the basic user experience. When you make your site inaccessible, that's when your site or service goes down the drain. Japanese users, aka Nico Nico's target audience, are either willing to put up with the annoyances of the site or pay for premium whereas people outside of Japan are less tolerant of that. Especially on a site where a majority of the content is in a language that isn't their mother tongue and wasn't doing anything to get over non-Japanese creators to the site. Plus, Nico Nico had fierce competition. Despite its faults, YouTube has managed to maintain a strong user base. It helps that Google has deep pockets and is willing to keep throwing money at something until Google kills it. Twitch offered a better streaming experience, and YouTube would also get into the streaming game. TikTok also came out with a right hook and really changed the internet content creation game. Uh, for the worse, Twitter provided a space where people can easily share and communicate with others. I use past tense here in case Elon kills the site. Finally, the rise of the VTuber and Hololive also gave content creators a way to stay anonymous. There, I mentioned Hololive twice in a single video. That one goes out for you, Artrix, you bloody degenerates. With all that said, Nico Nico Dolga still has an identity all its own. The users of the site helped create some long-lasting memes and music that I don't think we would have gotten otherwise. There's a tight-knit community on the site who likes the site, for the site, and the people who are on there. It's like people who use Reset Era. It might not be the biggest site, but the community aspect will keep it alive for many years to come. Funnily enough, I tried making an account on Reset Era, but all my emails are banned from the site, but you know what? I wear my bands and my blocks like badges of honor, and with that, the video is over, and thank you for watching. I've been meaning to make this video for a while now, but I can never quite get my words onto paper until recently, and I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. I do wish Nico Nico took off outside of Japan because it would have been really nice for YouTube to have some competition, but uh, oh well, what can you do? But what you can do is leave me some comments, so did you ever use Nico Nico back in the day, or do you still use it? Let me know down there in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos. Hit me up on the social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at ZMangs, and I'll see you in the next video. Later, everybody. Take care.